So good morning. Get my mic here. It's Monday, what can I say? Welcome to Woman at the Wheel, my YouTube channel. I'm Sue. And this morning I am headed over to Medill, Oklahoma to pick up a set of tie together doubles. And those are going to be going to Akron, oh, or not Akron, um, <laughs> going to Ohio, somewhere in Ohio. It's okay, it'll stay on the paperwork. I don't have to actually remember it. But I, I did know this last night. And I'm just leaving out this morning from the farm. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this around. Okay, there we go. Get this gate open. It's six fourteen, so I was actually thinking about getting I'm going about four o'clock, but I didn't get to bed till close to midnight. Just had too much to do. So I thought, well, I better get a little more sleep than that. I'm good. Once I've had like five to six hours of sleep, I'm usually good, real good. If I get eight hours of sleep, I'm real, real good. But maybe I'll get eight hours of sleep tonight. So I'm probably going to just cut across um, right over to I-35 today and I don't normally go that way um, because I don't like the road but the last time I was through there last week um, diesel fuel was $4.99 over at Elmore City so I'm going to go back through there and if it's still $4.99 I'm going to top my tanks off so I got a long way to go. Athens, Ohio, that's where I'm going. Athens, Ohio. So I'm going to top off my fuel tanks. And then head on over to Medill to get these trailers picked up. Now these trailers, they actually put them in the, in the yard at the office. I'm not sure why they did that because I wasn't going to pick them up till today. <laughs> Usually they do that if we're going like, you know, after hours or on the weekend. I wasn't going to work this weekend and I'm I was actually thinking about leaving yesterday so I could get back early with the 4th of July weekend coming up so I wouldn't have so much holiday traffic to contend with but we had a little storm front go through yesterday and it messed up my head pretty good I had a pretty good sinus headache all day so I thought well better to just stay home not try and drive with that I'm glad I did because it was it wasn't a horrible headache but it was enough that I didn't really feel like doing doing much put it that way so this is the the first day with this new camera it actually it's an old phone it's my old um, Samsung Galaxy S5 and from what I can tell it's got a lot better camera built into it than my um, Samsung A10e has which is a much newer model but I think they put more um, quality into their older cameras the the ones I've got now are like the cheapest Samsung's I can get it, but at the time that I got this um, S5 it, it was actually an expensive camera, but I got it. It wasn't like the newest model when I got it. It's one of their freebie giveaways. You know, once they've got two or three more versions out ahead of it, then they start giving those out with uh, when you would get your um, get your cell phone account set up with them, or you could upgrade or whatever. So this was actually my second smartphone the uh, s5 I'm not sure what the first one was it was 
just a little phone a little smartphone so I'm eastbound now on highway 29 I am east of Marlow Oklahoma in part a couple miles and I'm heading east over to I-35 So Bill did a couple of things um, to the truck this weekend. I did my end cap modifications, like tidying things up and, and reworking all this camera stuff. And in the meantime, he, he um, oh, and I also cleaned out my um, toolbox back here that I keep my DEF, my diesel exhaust fluid in my um, diesel fill spout nozzle keep them locked in there and he he put a vent on the diesel auxiliary diesel tank so i won't have any more problems with it doing what it did down in louisiana last week so what happened was um, the tank got hot of course it was 100 degrees down there and sunny and hot miserable And um, the road was exceedingly bumpy. I mean, really bad road, bad, bad road, going down by Homa. I don't know if you've ever been on Highway 90, but there are segments of it that are really rough. And so I was driving along there, and of course, as I was driving over these um, bumps, you know, bounce, 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 then that, all that diesel was sloshing around in that tank. Well, the tank wasn't vented. So it was building up pressure in the tank between the heat and the sloshing around. It started kind of oozing a little bit of diesel out of the fittings on top where the pump is. It looked like a, a lot had come out once I got it fit, cleaned up and figured it out and, and pumped it all down. It, I don't even think I lost a whole gallon. So it was just on the truck bed. It wasn't like running on the ground. So I got all that cleaned off, got everything cleaned up nice. and. Uh, so he added a vent so that won't happen again. So now it, it can vent instead of just building up that pressure. So it'll still slosh around, but it won't have any pressure behind it, kind of pushing it out the threads of these fittings, which is a good thing because I can't be running around with diesel leaking. <laughs> it's just kind of a no-no. Um, this isn't the first uh, rodeo with a, a diesel tank where you have to figure stuff out. The, the original um, auxiliary tank I had on my other truck was also aluminum which they're nice because they're lightweight tanks but um, if they get a crack in them it doesn't take much of a crack and then you've got a leak going. Well my original tank the old on the old truck did that it got a little crack in it so I had to take it off and take it out to a, or I had to yeah I had to take it off the truck and haul it out to a guy to have it brazed and then reinstalled it and it was fine once he once he braced it but it was just really a super fine little crack in that tank well this tank doesn't have any cracks or leaks in it it was just oozing out kind of coming up the threaded um, components on the top of the tank where the pumps at so that's cured the other thing he did that I love, love, love is <laughs> he moved my backup camera down to where it's actually useful to me. The the guys that I got this truck from, um, when I when I did get it, it had a different truck bed on it. It had like a farm bed with the hay forks. I was like, no, I don't I don't need that. I need the, the other they had two trucks that came in from the same seller, evidently, that they bought them from. And I looked at both trucks. I said, well, I want this truck, but I want that bed. So they switched the beds for me. They were really super nice to do that. They didn't have to do that, but they did. But I said, I need that bed because I'm going to be running and hauling trailers. So they switched the beds, and they did the, um, the backup camera. They put it in the existing hole for a backup camera. Well, the problem was the backup camera wasn't pointing down at all. It was just pointing straight out over the top of the ball. And I could barely see the ball in the 
feel the view of the backup camera just because it was mounted up too high and it was just just wasn't working for me so what what Bill did is he this weekend he moved it down to where it's just over the ball a little bit so I can actually see where, where I'm backing up to. I, I can actually line up better with these bumper pull trailers. That's the only thing I need it for is bumper pull trailers. I mean, it comes on every time I go in reverse, but you know, that's, that's when I actually need the thing to work so I can hopefully back up under it the first try and not have to be jockeying it around back and forth. It, I don't know how many of you have backed up to trailers without a backup camera. It, I mean, it's not that hard to do. People have been doing it for, you know, since there have been cars up until the time they got backup cameras, but it's just a lot easier with it. Uh, when, you're, when you're not using one, you have to kind of, you have to have landmarks. You have to know where, where, you, where to line up on the trailer, and, I mean, you get to where you can do it. If you do it enough, you, you can actually get pretty good at it. But it's just quicker if you can see what you're doing you know it makes more sense because when I when I was backing up and it wasn't helping me I'd back up and I'd have to get out and look and I'd have to you know judge oh, I need to come an inch to the right and I need to come back six inches whatever then I have to you know kind of get it in position that way so this will make it much easier I won't have to be guessing so much I can just see what I'm doing Anytime you're, you know, driving anything, it's a good idea to be able to see what you're doing. <laughs> that's, that's a big positive. <laughs> so, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is Interstate 35 right here, and I'm just going to go right under it. Bye bye, 35. Don't need to be messing with that today. So I'm basically not going to be on interstates until I get up to I-40. And that's fine with me. <laughs> I don't, don't care about running on interstates. I usually do when I'm delivering just because it's the most um, direct and the quickest route usually. And on the interstate, I've got, you know, they're always, well, unless you're in a construction zone, they're two, lane, two to three lanes or more. So I'm not obstructing everybody else when I'm pulling something that I have to drive a little slower with. So. I cannot get the temperature right in this truck. It's either cold or hot. It's just, just not just right. And I ain't Goldilocks, so I guess it's not going to be just right. <laughs> okay, we're going to turn off of Highway 29. Well, I think 29 actually combines with 77 here. 77 is a north-south highway that runs pretty much all the way up the state. runs down here through Davis. <laughs> okay, this is the Washita River. This is a pretty major river for this part of Oklahoma. Pretty major drainage. And it's got a lot of water in it. Wow. Red, red water. Red dirt, red water. All these stacks and things you're seeing in front of us that's a refinery at Winniewood an oil refinery I think pretty sure it's a refinery or it's either oil or gas might be both 
either or both, not sure. So fuel is just insanely expensive in this part of the world right now. I was really happy to get it for 509 the other day. Now I remember when I was horrified at the thought of paying five dollars a gallon and now it seems like a good deal. This is pretty bad what they're doing to us. I'll be glad when they get done making whatever point it is they're making with all this fuel stuff. With all these exorbitant gas prices and diesel prices. Bill was giving me his opinion on it the other day. He thinks, and I kind of tend to agree with him, it's one of the only things that makes sense. He thinks that the, the um, gas companies are intentionally doing this to hurt Biden's presidency. And I kind of think he's probably right. I mean, if you think about it, what was the first thing Biden did when he got in office? He shut down the pipeline. You know, it was just like a, a direct slap at the, the fuel companies. And us, really, because that would have made cheaper fuel for us and we would have been, you know, more independent instead of having to buy <laughs> diesel buying fuel from freaking Russia for God's sake <laughs> so anyway I tend to think that he's probably right that what we're seeing is retaliation against stupid stupid policy so which shouldn't surprise anybody because I mean Biden's never been the sharpest pencil in the box really so anyway here's this refinery you know the energy business employs a lot of people and we all rely on it so you know why these politicians think they've got to, you know, be jerks and screw with that, I don't know, but... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I think they're mostly all morons to begin with. And I don't trust anything any of them say. Either side of the aisle. I think that the old adage is true about politicians. If their lips are moving, they're lying. Pretty much, that's it. And I, I've got my own theory about Trump, why he was so successful getting elected and all. And, uh, because I can tell you there were a lot of people who weren't real crazy about the idea of having him before he got in. And I was kind of one up. I was torn on it. Because he was he, so good at putting his foot in his mouth. You know, I was kind of worried about that. And it turned out to be his downfall pretty much, too, I think. But I think he tried really hard to do a lot of good stuff. But just the, the idea that he made it in there. And, you know, that was pretty much the American people throwing a hand grenade into the top tiers of our federal government and saying, here, catch, hot potato. You know, it's like, 
let's shake this stuff up a little bit. We don't want a politician in there. We want somebody who's going to, you know, do something for us for a change instead of just enriching themselves or, you know, getting Ukraine money for their boy who had never had a real job or whatever. So, I mean, there were legitimate reasons that he got elected. And I like I liked him in there. I actually did. Because he... When he wasn't shooting himself in the foot, <laughs> I, ha I have this love-hate thing with Donald Trump. I love that he has this, you know, um, this real love for America. And he's just a very personable guy when he's being good Donald. But when he's being, you know cranky Donald or offended Donald then he turns into something else so that's the trouble I had with him and I, I think if he could have learned to curb his temper a little bit and if he hadn't just replied to every slight if he would have just you know kept himself above the fray and not tweeted out stuff so much I think he would have been better off I think he would have maybe accomplished a little bit more because I don't think people would have been trying so hard to get his goat. Because it got to the point, I mean, they, they tormented the man day and night the entire time he was in there, and they're still going after him. But, I mean, you, you can see the charisma and stuff when he's doing his his uh, rallies. He's, he really, you know, touches people. He, he says what a lot of people are thinking, but they don't dare to say out loud. But he just throws it out there. <laughs> so, so the way I see it is he was, he was kind of this hand grenade that the, the voters threw into Washington, D.C. to kind of blow things up a little bit. And he did. He did exactly what we sent him in there to do. And, you know, he got a lot more reaction, I think, than what we were thinking he was going to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, the, the left just went insane, and the media just, they, they're still going after him. He hasn't been president now for, what, two years, and they're still blaming him for stuff that's happening now. It's like, come on, you know. But they do that with every president, pretty much. You know, they, they blame everybody but themselves. Whoever's screwing it up, the last person they'll ever blame is themselves, so... But, I, you know, that's, that's the thing about Trump. That's the thing I hated about him was he could not let anything go. And then he opened himself up to more attacks. You know, it was just kind of like a vicious cycle. You know. But would I vote for him again? Yeah, I actually would. You know, would I ever vote for Biden? Oh, my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> to me, Biden is like this. He, he's a puppet, for one thing. Uh, I don't think he's got an original thought in his head. He's a, raci a racist jerk and always has been. And now they've flipped everything around to try and make, make him look like he's just this great guy. He's not a great guy. He's, a, he's not a nice guy at all. He's a, not a good guy. I mean, I, I really think he got... If, if he got actually elected, I think it was only because uh, people were voting against Trump, not for him. Because there's nothing there to vote for. He's got no substance. He's got no platform. He's got no ideas. He's got no... He can't even give a speech. I mean, he's just... He's just a do-nothing, have-never-done-nothing Washington, um, you know, bloodsucker who's, who's been on the the public dole all of his life. He's never had an actual job. I mean, even AOC, at least she can say she was a bartender. You know, she actually had to work for a living a little bit. As much of a ding-dong as she is. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about Biden. I don't, I don't think he's got a brain in his head. I think he was well-placed and I think he's politically savvy. But I don't think he's a smart guy, and I don't think he's a nice guy either. So, you know, what do you do? There's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I disagree with a lot of what happened, but, you know, 
they're not in there forever. You know, it's a, it's a term limited position. That's what we need for senators too though. If we could term limit all the senators, we'd have a lot better government, I think. A lot more representative government than what we got right now. Because right, what we've got right now is the, the good old boy um, and girl. I don't want to make this like a sexist thing because it's not. Because there's a bunch of women in there. Look at old Pelosi. She's been in there since God was young. And she's a wrinkled up old prune now. It's just, it's ridiculous. These people come in and they, they just get rich off us. And they, they get rich by screwing us is what they do. And they really screw us badly and for some reason we let them and then we re-elect re them so I wonder if you actually figured it out how many times has Nancy Pelosi actually been re-elected or is it just kind of you know they just tinker with the numbers over there in California too makes you wonder doesn't it I mean, I'm not going to sit here and cry about elections getting stolen or anything, because I think it's been going on in this country for a long, long time. I think Maxine Waters and Nancy Pelosi are two really good illustrations of how um, elections have been rigged forever, because who would vote for either one of them old bats? Seriously? What are they doing to help anybody but themselves? They're not. You know, they're making themselves and their families rich. And, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Mitch McConnell? He's another one. He's just as bad as they are. He, he's like this old turtle that's been hanging out in that pond bottom feeding, you know, for <laughs> for 50 damn years. Oh, they're just disgusting. I, I'm pretty sure that's not what our founding fathers intended with some, you know, career politician going in there and enriching themselves. I think that's what they warned us about. And that's why they gave us the Constitutional Convention, so we could go in and change things if our government turned into that, which I wish they, you know, wish we could get all the states on board and do that and put term limits on them bastards, all of them. You know, the Congress term limited the president after, who was it, that was in there for so long, FDR or somebody who was like in there for, I don't know, 40 years or whatever. they term limited him but they need to term limit themselves but of course they're not going to do that because that's their bread and butter so you know they don't want the president having too much power they want all the power to themselves and that's just kind of how it works so that's the one thing we could do that would change everything if we could term limit senators you know, term limit congress two terms and you're out that would cure a lot of this corruption crap. A lot of it would go away. Okay, now I'm going to run over to Sulphur. This is Davis, Oklahoma, by the way. The last time we went through was Winniewood, and now this is Davis. So anyway, I, I don't talk much about politics, <clears throat> and I'll probably cut this whole talk out and turn this into a super speedy or something, but I do have my thoughts about it. I just don't see any reason to get in fights over it with people, you know? That's not, not what it was meant to be. Don't think that's what was intended. Get us all fighting with each other. That's what it's turned into. That's what politicians now want us to do. Because the more time we spend fighting with each other, the more shenanigans they can get away with. 
when we're looking at each other instead of not looking at them. Oh, <laughs> you know, one of those deals. I like these horse sculptures here. Those are so neat. It's going to put me there to pick this up at about 8.10, which is fine. They could have just left them over at the factory, I guess. As far as that goes, I could have picked them up there, but this way they've probably already done the, all the stuff. I'll find out. If they already took the, well, I'm sure they probably did. They probably took the front wheels off and checked all the lugs. That's the standard procedure once they get them to the yard. So they want you to be able to just pull in and get it and go. I hope these are not cargoes. Just after that last experience I had with the cargo trailers, I don't think I want to do that again. I mean, you know what, I'm going to run out of stuff to pull if I keep saying, well, I don't want to do that anymore. So that's not what I mean. I just hope I don't have the trouble with them that I had if they are cargoes. I mean, if I'm going to have trouble, I'm going to take those wheels off anyway, off the back one. That was kind of interesting because that's the first time I actually had trouble pulling doubles and I've pulled a lot of doubles so there was just something just out of whack enough that having two sets of back tires on the ground on that back trailer was really making it fish around bad and fish tailing is not good you don't want your trailers fish tailing ever <laughs> ever because a fish tail is a precursor to a flip over and wreck is what that is. We don't want no parts of that, obviously. So where we're going down here, we're, we're going over to Sulphur. I guess I could be driving a little faster here. Speed limit's actually 70. Um, Sulphur, which is the next little town over. It's not very far. And we'll go down south from Sulphur. And we'll be going um, through the Chickasaw National Recreation Area. It's like a national park thing down in here. Just, just right in town. It's kind of neat. If you ever get into these parts, that's a good place to go and spend spend a day or so. I mean, you can you can camp back in there. Um, they've got. I think they've got campsites up on the reservoir up above the recreational area. I'm not sure if they've got campsites down in the recreational area. But it's really pretty in there. And I, I guess the, the best time of year just depends on what you like. In the summer it's going to be super hot. And there's um, Travertine Creek runs through there. So there's always a butt ton of people in there in the summertime. It's very popular. I like it better in the fall and the winter. Actually, you know, like warmish days in the winter, it's nice to go walking back through there. It's a really pretty area. It's really nice, neat place to go. 
and they've got trails that go all up along Travertine Creek all the way back up in there so you can hike a couple miles up in it's not not like a hard hike or anything it's not like hiking into the flat tops in northwestern Colorado or anything but it's a nice little walking path and you can you know take a bottle of water and walk back up in there it's just really neat it's a neat area and they've got a nature center where they, they explain all the stuff they've got different stuffed critters in there so you can get a close-up look at them and they got some snakes and other stuff it's kind of just really interesting it's a good place to take kids because you can go to the nature center first you know or, or you can run them around till they're tired and then take them to the nature center last I guess however it works best with your kids <laughs> but, but it's really neat and then there's a city park Festival traffic ahead. Consider alternate route starting 625. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, boy. I didn't know they were having a festival. Well, there isn't really an alternate route for me to take where I need to go here, so... Seems like their traffic lights are. I wonder if they had a storm or something here. I don't know. Don't really look like it. I mean, there's some future storms brewing down south here, and see some thunderheads brewing already. This is Sulphur, Oklahoma. Nice little town. I really like these little towns through here. They're just nice, normal little towns. Five thirty. So I'm still in the high fuel zone, pretty much. Evidently this festival isn't going on right now. I haven't run it across any festival traffic, which is good. <laughs> Pleases me. some rain looks like you know, I might ought to take the northern route I was thinking southern route but I may switch over to the northern route One thing you don't want to do is speed through sulfur. 
if you don't even want to do that. Okay, so that's Rock Creek we just crossed, and it Travertine Creek runs into that, I guess. But you can see the, the park starts over here on the right. I think this is a city park, but they've got like a spring out here. It's just really picturesque. It's a very pretty spot. Oh yeah, that's part of the National Recreation Area. So it starts right in town. It's a very touristy area. You know, there's plenty of stuff to do here. They've got a casino over here. turn this seat and see what I'm talking about. All that up in there is casino, I think. A casino and a fancy hotel. So this is the highway that goes down to Medill. But it also goes right through this um, National Recreation Area. This is Travertine Creek where we're crossing here. If you tur turn left right there, is, you'll go over to the Nature Center and up where you can walk around. Oh, they do have a campground down here. That's what I thought. So you can camp here. It's just really nice. It's a fun place in the summer. It's a fun place all year round. I like it. I prefer it in the fall and winter myself when it's cooler. But that's just me because I'm not real big on getting out and run around in the heat mainly because I, I refuse to dress in summer clothes I won't wear shorts or tank tops just because I'm an old lady now and it just doesn't look I'm just not going to do that <laughs> no thank you then up in here they've got buffalo you can see this kind of fancy fence they got there they have a buffalo herd up in here Bison Viewpoint. Oh, there they are. There's some down in there. Munching away. Oh, they got calves too. I'd be leaving them alone. They got calf. You don't want to be screwing around with them. They'll come through that fence and stomp your butt. They take a mine too. And all this down here, you got to be careful about your, your speed <laughs> because they will slap a ticket on you so fast, it will make your head spin. I often see them running traffic down through here. Okay. All right, we're out of the park. And this is Highway 177. We came in on 77 and then we got on Highway 7 and then we got back and then we changed to 177. So Sulphur and Davis, the towns we just came through, if I went back the other way and just stayed on the highway, it's Highway 7, it would go straight over to Duncan, Oklahoma. I'd go right back to where I came from, pretty much. This is one of the things about the way Oklahoma is set up. It's a lot different from Texas. In Oklahoma, all the roads run north and south, east and west. I mean, not all of them, but there are a lot of roads run north, south, east, west, and a lot of different ones. So you can kind of stair-step your way and get anywhere in the state without having to, like, go out of your way too much. In Texas, as you've probably seen, the roads come out of each city like the spokes of a wheel. So you, you, don't, you can't really do that stair-stepping thing, going, you know, south and east or west and then south or whatever. You can't really do that in Texas because the roads don't run that way. The roads in Texas predate the system, the grid system that Oklahoma was set up on. 
so the, the roads there, um, like you have a town, let's just say whatever town, Texas, there may be six roads coming out of it all going different directions, but they're going off to other towns. You know, it's just the way they did them back then. So it's very much more difficult to get around in Texas without being on the interstate than it is in Oklahoma. You can do just about, you know, not, not, not too much slower in Oklahoma just running on surface roads because you can, you know, you can stair step over to where you need to be or you can just run directly to it. So it's a little bit more efficient road system. Okay, so I'm 35 miles from Medill another half an hour that's about right that puts me there at right about eight that's a trooper their cars are pretty distinctive have to decide what route I'm going to take. The most direct route, I might have trouble pulling doubles through. I don't know, I've never had trouble pulling doubles through there. One of the guys told me he was stopped and given a warning for pulling doubles through Missouri. I hear this a lot about different states and I looked it up there's no no restriction on it where there is a restriction is Illinois um, you're not supposed to pull a double in Illinois unless the front one is like a gooseneck they don't want you pulling two ball hitch trailers so I'm and that's where my my hotel is that I picked out but I've hauled through Illinois before and they never even paid any attention and I hauled right past troopers so I don't think it's something that they maybe worry about too much. I think they might worry about it more if you're like not a commercial hauler. Let's say you, you're a guy with a camp trailer and a fishing boat and they're both bumper pulls. That might be more what they are concerned about. I don't know. I mean... So it's probably wiser for me to just circumvent both of those states and go the southern route, even though my best place to stop is up in Indiana. It's kind of aggravating. So, you know, do I take my chances or do I do, you know, the smart but less convenient thing? <laughs> yeah. See my dilemma? Do I want to be smart or do I want it to be easy? Hmm. This is not going to be easy if I get stopped and get a ticket. That'd make it worse. But I've never had anybody in Indiana mess with me at all. So I just don't know. They do have a lot of troopers there, but they're usually ignoring me, I don't know.
177 down here for another 15 or so miles. And then I'll be going east on Highway 199, which will take me right over to the back side of Medill, to the north side, which is exactly where I need to be. I think it's really pretty over here in this part of Oklahoma. It's a lot greener and fluffier looking than it is where I live. They get more rain over here than we get. It's like once you get past I-35 you get into a heavier rain zone and lower elevation. community is called Nebo, N-E-B-O. I guess Sensel went out over convenience. I'm going to take the south route. I don't need to have any problems or get any tickets. And I don't feel like I need to test the Missouri or Illinois state troopers. <laughs> Even though it kind of screws up my, my hotel plan. So if these are the right kind of trailers, I might not need a hotel anyway. Probably won't be though. I don't think it's going to be something I can sleep in, so... You never know. You just have to wait and see what I got when I get there. Now the trailer I'm picking up in Indiana will be a different story. That will definitely probably be something I can sleep in. Well, I shouldn't say definitely. I should say probably because most of what I pick up up there are horse trailers with living quarters. They're fancy horse trailers. But I have picked up some stock trailers there too and some just straight horse trailers without living quarters so it's just going to depend. It would be nice if, I, if it is because then I, I can save money on motels and not have to spend quite so much. That's always a good thing.
nice. It doesn't seem like it's going to get super hot today. I mean, it may later, but right now it's 71 degrees. So Highway 53 cuts over across I-35 and goes over to a little town south of Duncan called Comanche. hate rumble strips. This is the Washita River again, I think. They don't have it marked on that end. Yeah, it is. They got marked on this end. Washita River. So we've crossed that not twice now. Once at Winniewood and once down here. Little bull.
this little town is called Dixon. We're only about 15 miles from where I need to be now. <laughs> so we're getting there. I'm going to turn off on 199. So we're going east on 199. Well, this cooler is staying cool over here beside me. Seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. This is going to be a unique experience for me having like normal food on the road. It's a rain. quite 10 more miles I think so the factory these trailers came out of is up here on the left that I'm going to be hauling I haul a lot of their trailers So we'll go on down here to the office and see what we got. They've still got a bunch of them lined up ready to go, so... I wonder if we're like short-handed or something. I say we, they. <laughs> it's not, not we, because I'm my own company.
there's just a lot of trailers sitting back there in that yard look like they're tied together and ready to go and some of them were there when I was up here and picked up the last one which was two weeks ago now the last set of tie together as I hauled So we're on the northern outskirts of Medill, Oklahoma, and this building you see up in front of us is the Big Tex Trailer Factory. It used to be CM, but they bought out CM, I guess. They used to make horse trailers and truck beds here. In this end, in this building, they used to make truck beds. And then there's another building south of it they used to make horse trailers. It's all trailers now. It's all big text trailers. Dump trailers mostly. Their factories usually make one, one kind of trailer or maybe two. This one makes dump trailers and I think, I don't know if they got any flat ones in there or not. It might all be dump trailers. Okay, I'll get in here and see what I'm picking up today. There's trailers everywhere. I'm just gonna get in here and get out of the way and then go see if I can figure out what what's going where. There's a stack of truck beds. I used to haul those on my 40 foot trailer. That's why I don't have a 40 foot trailer anymore. <laughs> I don't wanna be messing with that kind of stuff. Okay, it's like it's pretty crowded out here. People everywhere, parked everywhere. I'm gonna pull over over here by this old, that's a Ford tractor right there. I'm gonna figure out why my... It's so dark. Okay, so this is my load. Just checking my connections, making double sure. I've already checked all my lights, brakes, all that. Lugs, everything, we got temp tags on. These are actually stock trailers. I guess they're not horse trailers per se. So my length from this back trailer to the front of my truck is 59 feet. Now I gotta turn this around back in here. I actually feel pretty fortunate because it's looking like rain out there, but it has not rained on me. <laughs> Makes me happy. Oh, I was going to show you the inside of the truck here since I, this is what I did to the dashboard. I've moved my GPS over and I put down this black towel. There's my fancy new cooler my trash bucket over there it's just a box with a trash bag in it and then the back seat all my junk all my necessaries so anyway that's what it actually looks like in here this is kind of my view of the cab So anyway,
Okay, he's not answering me. <laughs> he quoted me one price on this next job and then just quoted me a different price on it. So I'm just trying to confirm which one's the right price. I'm sure he'll let me know before I get there. It's going to be two days before I get there on that, so I'm not going to sweat it. In Athens, Ohio. 889 miles as the crow flies, but it's 1,100 miles or more on the road. So, yeah. I'm going to go as far over here as I can get. Do you remember when I'm pulling doubles, I can't really back up. So I have to make this turn as wide as I can make it. They came out and moved the trucks back out of the way. The, this white truck with the red fender right there, it was sitting up here and they came out and moved them so I'd have room to turn around, which was awfully nice of them because they were parked right here <laughs> where I need to go. <laughs> so I appreciate them doing that. That was awesome. I hope I don't have the same troubles I had um, with that last set of tie togethers. But those were cargoes and they're a little different. I've never had any trouble with stock trailers yet, knock on wood. But if I do, I know how to pull the tires off. So, okay, I'm going to ease out here because there's a big hole back there. I don't want to bounce those trailers around any more than I have to. Okay. Hey, actually came out and talked to me. I should have gone in and visited, but I don't know. Seemed like they're probably busy. Monday morning and all, they're probably busier than one arm paper hanger. Probably didn't need me coming in there and plunking down in the middle of it and disrupting everything. I would, if I had to guess, that is my guess. Stick that thing down where you want it. <laughs> Place it like you intend to. Okay. I'm too slow to tell whether I'm going to have any trouble or not, so I'm going to speed up here a little bit. I can't get real fast on this side of town. But good, nothing's looking funny at all. No funny business back there. I don't expect to have any trouble with these. Like I say, though, if I do, I know how to remedy the situation now. Yeah, you learn as you go along, and really, if you, you if you pay attention, you can pretty much learn at least one little thing every day. If you do that, you know, regularly, for long, you, you got a pretty good body of knowledge about whatever it is you're doing. But it's like anything else, you know, when you first start doing it, you, you got zero reference, zero experience to reference. But the more you do it, generally speaking, the better you should get at it, I guess. I feel like that anyway. Battery power low, this dang thing. Try and plug this phone in. It'd help if I turned the plug around the right way. Maybe. Oh, I can't see it. Damn it. Here we go. I had it set where I wanted it. Now I don't. Okay, so this is Medill, Oklahoma. M A D I L L. I don't know what route this thing is trying to set for me. It's wanting to run me over. I think probably to 69 in the north, which is the way I intend to go. Yeah, okay, it is. Just making sure. Sometimes it picks a weird route and 
if I'm not on top of it, not paying attention. <laughs> about where I buy fuel which is kind of sad because <laughs> I can't get into every place pulling these two trailers it's not as difficult as maneuvering actually forward going forward it's not as difficult as if I had like a 40 foot flat trailer back there because the first trailer follows the second trailers back axle so in that sense it's it's more like one of those segmented buses that they drive in the cities where they got to make tight turns so instead of having one long bus they have two short buses connected with kind of a bendy middle kind of like an accordion well they do that because you can turn sharper corners that way same thing with this I still can't turn a real sharp corner but I can do better with this and I can with a 40 foot trailer. Even though between these two trailers, they're, they're almost 40 feet back there. I think they're like 37 feet from the back of my truck to the back of the back trail, I think it's 37 feet. So it makes it a little easier to get into some of these fuel stops that otherwise I wouldn't be able to get into because I can, I can maneuver a little better. I just can't back up. I mean, I can back up, but I can't control where that back trailer goes if I do back up. Not really. <laughs> kind of one of those deals. So, I just don't back up. So, I'm just careful where I pull into. So, if I see fuel someplace and I can get into, which with, with trailers on like this, I might as well go through the big truck lane. I can kill two birds with one stone there if they've got deaf fluid too. I can fill up my deaf fluid and top off my spare um, jug of it. So there is a truck stop out here on the south end of town. Now whether their fuel will be any less expensive than Love's, I don't know. But if it's, you know, 509 or anything like in that range, I may stop and just fill everything up. Because I'm probably not going to do a whole lot better um, between here and Ohio, I imagine. It's always a guessing game because I don't know obviously what fuel prices are going to be. I can check them on several apps, but those apps are none of them are really reliable because they change so frequently. That and then some of some of them are like, you know, user submitted data and it's just not accurate for whatever reason. So I don't know. So I'm I'm not going to try and second guess it, but if I can find a place where it's reasonable that I can get into, I will and just top everything off. Okay, 519, I might as well just go in here. I gotta fix my logbook now anyway. My logbook did not do what I, didn't save my entry. Sometimes it's a real pain in my butt. Let's see, are these? Nope. Damn it! They they got these pointed a certain way. You have to enter in a certain direction to be able to to fuel them, and I got to go the other way. They've got big enough yard; it makes it pretty easy to turn around. But still, it's annoying. I don't know if they've got deaf fluid here or not. Looks like they do. So I'll, I'll be filling everything up, I guess. Deaf and the diesel and all of it. The whole shooting match. Service. 